Welcome to another week here at the Tour Lorraine. Thomas and Nate, his brother, um, are working on getting all the receptacles uh, finished in the first floor. We are actually also installing receptacles in the parlor room where we already had power, where we're obviously changing it up um, from the previous owner. And then um, I installed a few more spots of um, the chandeliers and then the then I needed to lab uh, label all the cables and things like that. So there's a lot of small little things that just needed to get done. I'm also looking at the drainage pipe um, outside in the, uh, um, in the yard to figure out what kind of options we have to connect it to, or to connect our house drainage to the city. So that's one of the other things that I need to figure out um, before really we can glue it all together and have the inspector come. Um, so hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so the guys are bringing wire all the way down the hallway to the last room in the house that needs a uh, wire and all the boxes put in. We're trying to get that done today and then um, 
and then I think that's gonna be our day here. Uh, the guys are bringing the power down to this room. This is the last room in yep. the house that actually already has power. The one room that does have power, but um, they're getting the new circuits and everything connected. And then hopefully next week they'll disconnect the old circuits and we'll have it all on our um, new setup. You might be wondering why we're putting more receptacles in this room than we already have. The blue ones are the old receptacles. They weren't really re done correctly. Um, we are using them right now because this is our only room that has power, but they will get uh, removed later. Um, so we installed new boxes in this room and receptacles. Um, they don't have power yet, but hopefully next week we can um, run power to all our boxes. Um, or sub panels and then um, fix um, or connect the, the breaker box inside and put all the breakers in so that we have um, the electricity finished in the first two floors. So the reason that I was digging here was because I wanted to find out how deep our drainage pipe goes down into the ground before it jetties out into the street. Unfortunately, it's only a foot right from the clean out obviously here, which is not that good. The plan that I had is if it goes quite a ways down that I would actually lay the drainage pipe in front of the house so that I don't have to run it in the basement above the headspace so I would have to lower the ceiling in the in the basement I really don't want to do that or have an exposed pipe um, and second of all I have to add a drainage area in the utility room where I need to put the hot water heater and where I'm putting all the the heating and cooling for the house and since, there, since it's regulation that I have to have a um, drainage right there where the hot water heater is, I really wanted to just run the, the drainage down out on the outside of the house instead of obviously way above and I'll show you guys inside. So I will figure out if potentially we want to just dig further down and maybe we'll have somebody come out and see how deep the, the drainage out there is on the city so that if I wanted to lower it by about three feet is what I probably would need um, that I could if I could do that or not 
Um, so I'll have to just contact the city and figure out uh, with the water department if that's possible. So what my plan was that I would come out right, uh, right back there is the hot water heater. I would come out um, underneath the floor area. So it, if the floor starts right here, about a foot or so down, and then I would go straight in there, um, right in there, that's where the um, drainage is. So I would go straight over past the gas line and then into the city drainage water. But unfortunately, I have to figure out if that's even possible with now having to lower uh, the drain over there. So we are inside here. The drain is coming over from the utility room. And then here's the old pipe that was connecting outside there where I was digging. And the one pro first problem that I have is I am about a couple to th two, three inches lower now than I was before. So I will have to lower this entire pipe section and then break the wall a little bit so that I can come out a little lower. And so my preferred solution would be in the utility room instead of taking this sharp turn over there and coming out. I would love to just come straight down some over here, um, somewhere along the wall corner here. I would just come straight down, have a drain also in the floor because this is where the overflow is for the water from the hot, uh, from the hot water heater. And then I would have that emergency drain that I have to have by regulation. And then it would just connect the entire rest of the house drainage um, pipes out there into the ground and then take a sharp turn into that area where I was showing. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm printing labels for all the different uh, cables that I have so that I know right away where they're going to. And also in the future when uh, you open a box, you might not have the labels on so that you can still see right away immediately what each cable does. Here's example label uh, for the lights. I am printing it two times in a row just to make it simple when I'm putting it onto the cable I have, um, basically I can stick the cable on one side and it's re readable from each, whichever side you're looking at on the cable. So the roofers finished yesterday, they just finished painting the valleys with the same color that the metal ridges are already pre-painted and I think it looks really great, really great. You can tell on the top we added a little detail and we made sure that they would paint the ball on, all the way on the top in silver. So I think it's giving it a nice finishing touch at the end. Um, but everything else is done on the roof so now we just have to do the siding before they can put on the gutters here's a close-up of what they did you can tell here at this layer that had the old one and here's the first new layer they added these brackets everywhere um, so how this works is normally there would be the two nails, one on the left side and one on the right side. But obviously they can't do that because the old tile would cover it up. So what they did 
there to make it simpler on themselves is they added these copper brackets and the copper brackets have a nail screw somewhere at this height and then they just hang the slate tile onto those so that simplifies this and makes it actually work otherwise there would be no other way to hang these after the fact so anytime a tile breaks that's kind of how you fix them um, you can tell there's also a little detail on the top here you can see the silver ball all the way in the top they also repainted and refinished the rest of that uh, topper and then they installed new metal ridge covers and then they finished the valleys here with a two pound component that basically allows them to um, seal with the bottom with the underlayer component and the top um, coat is really just for the color here's also the detail that we have that the roof itself looks like so there's a crown molding on that is the green part and then underneath it here just the wood um, is st the straight part um, we are probably uh, will need to put some blocking on so that we can put the gutters on correctly um, and we probably also have to replace some of the crown molding because it is in pretty rough condition especially on on some of the corners um, as you can tell maybe from here um, that corner is looking really bad um, so we will have to replace some of the wood to finish it off but in general this will be good they um, just laid it flat over to the top so that when the gutters would come the water would run into the gutters I don't know if you can tell but here's one of the holes where the old um, hidden Philadelphia gutters were coming out um, obviously they closed it up on the top from the roof and so this is now all open we will obviously have to refinish this but the rest of the wood here is also in pretty rough condition so we'll probably just have to replace this all um, and then scrape the wood so the dental molding would be nice and finished too here's a close-up of one of the features that i find really fascinating um, so this chimney at one point they added this spike that goes right through there um, to hold this chimney um, it is leaning a little bit so i guess to solve that um, they just decided to put um, a metal bracing that is attached to the roof and the further further to the left um, through it and so it stops it from falling so there's two different types of hidden gutters that they have in and houses in the united states um, so this is a real hidden gutter um, it is just finishing out the roof sometimes it's not all the way at the end but it finishes out the roof it actually you will not be able to tell from the bit from the bottom that there is a gutter so it would finish off completely straight if you follow uh, would follow this roof line it ends up right away at the top bottom and it's basically just hidden inside um, the roof so you can tell over here it's just a an area where the water can collect and then run to one of the spots where it would drain um, there is also what they call philadelphia gutters and that's you can tell on this roof um, it's actually another just wood beam that has metal enclosed on top of it um, so the water will run um, and it will get collected on that um, barrier and then runs over to one of the sides of course where it then um, also goes into a hidden gutter hole like this one it's just built so the gutter on is built on top of the roof instead of into the roof um, what it was is at our house we had only on our lower roofs we had hidden gutters and then all of the other roofs up here had the philadelphia gutters what was built on top so what they actually did is they they just took the philadelphia gutters off um, fixed all the wood underneath it put a protector uh, protecting um, tarp or something underneath it um, a wider sealant and then put uh, the new slate over the top i think we have shown it before but um, in this section of the roof uh, this is on the front of the building um, we have actually shingles wood uh, cedar shingles that finish this side of the roof um, off um, it's pretty traditional in a lot of victorian homes here in our area 
we have, especially in those type of ridge lines that uh, have something jetted out from the roof. Um, they have uh, this set of sh uh, shingles to finish it off. They always painted them in various different colors. Since it's Victorian, obviously lots of different colors were used everywhere. Uh, but in general, the rest of the house is then um, clapboard siding that is basically a beveled siding where the pieces are just uh, horizontally above each other. So Julia and I have a few of these tiles that are around all our fireplaces, but we are kind of missing on each one of them, uh, each fireplace, a few, a few tiles. Um, they're all different colors. We have a blue in the, in the dining room. We have a grayish uh, color in the parlor. And here in the living room, it's a greenish color. Um, we saw um, on some of them, they actually mismatched, mismatched some of the fireplaces. So I assume they fixed a few um, in the past with a few leftover tiles. But one of the things that we have been really trying to find uh, matches, I couldn't find yet um, anything that um, either reproductions or um, online I've been searching. So if anybody knows, these are pretty traditional Victorian tiles. That's how I found that out. Um, and they are always called Trent. Um, and I've been really looking. If somebody um, knows where to get them, um, just leave us a comment. That would be very helpful. Appreciate it. Here's an example of where they mismatched some of the tiles. They have this blue reddish color um, in, on this fireplace with some of the green ones, green tiles that um, obviously don't match. I, we assume that they had issues with them gluing, missing, falling out, or even breaking um, with the heat. So we assume that they replaced a couple, but could only find the matches that they already have or had some leftovers. So that's kind of why we're looking for other pieces so that we can finish the, the fireplaces again the way they were. I would have liked to do a drone footage today of the roof, but unfortunately it's way too windy. So I have to postpone that some uh, to some other week, but I haven't forgotten about it especially with the roof now being done. We definitely want to take a closer look of what the roofers did with the drone, but it just has to wait for another week when it's not um, so windy. Well, I think this is it for this time. Have a wonderful week and I see you next time I turn on the camera. Bye. <laughs>